It's the Ron and Fez Show on XM202, Sirius 197. Are you all right, Craig? I hear you coughing a little bit there. Oh, yeah, I'm okay, Ronnie. Thanks, man. Okay, what do you got for us, buddy? Oh, listen, man, I have a horrible confession. And right. I think you got a confession I mean, got with a the confession music. Okay, yeah, play the confession. Yeah. No, I don't hear the music. Mm. <laughs> Go ahead. What do you do? All right. Well, the first the first part of the confession uh, uh, in, entails me developing a horrendous drug habit. Uh, what drug? Of course, I, huh? What drug? Uh, well, opiates mainly. All okay. types. You know, what do you got? Right. Uh, and, you know, lying over a period of like five years uh, about, uh, you know, increasing amounts of money disappearing from my bank account. Mm -hmm. you know? And then uh, the second uh, part of the confession uh, entails uh, a catharsis between me and my wife in which I cop to having a problem, but not to being a drug addict. What problem did you tell her? I got to having a gambling problem, which I don't have. I never even bet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you and then, you thought it would sound better if you said I have a gambling addiction. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the the third and final part of the confession uh, involves me actually going to therapy for said gambling addiction. And you're lying to the therapist. Yes, lying to two separate therapists. Yeah. All right. I understand uh, lying to your wife, but you got to get out of this thing, right? I mean, there's no fucking recovery well, program. It's over. I'm out of it. It's done. It's over. I, I don't go to therapy for it anymore. But obviously, yeah. you're still a drug addict. You no, haven't. No, no. I, I stopped getting high. Yeah. Only be from what? From what just. Do you mean from what? From just holding on. And, In other no, words, I, you you haven't learned any of the tools to quit being a drug addict you just oh, no, stop yeah, no 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 I just haven't been high since this whole thing happened right because the heat's been on you but the second uh -huh. you the second you get a little bit of breathing room and there's some opiates around you're going to dome again I don't know I mean I guess we'll see you know what the funny thing happened all my sources and this is fucking crazy mm -hmm. but dude like all my sources I had like three of them they all like disappeared in the space of a week two of them got locked up and the other one, you know, just, you know, whatever. Yeah, that happens to people that you cop from. It's not all that unusual yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, for drug dealers to get arrested. It's a, a tremendous coincidence, everybody in a week. Yeah. So not really. When you really look into it, it <laughs> does happen. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I wish you all the best with it, man. You're living a lie. Good, good luck <laughs> to it with you. All right, buddy. Thank you. All right, peace. Because there's not a uh, recovery program that doesn't urge you to lie to your loved ones. And live a, a life of dishonesty. That seems to be the, and this is a, a fuzzy, what I'm doing right now, a sarcasm. Mm -hmm. I, I wish the guy all the luck in the world. But, you know, you basically are basing your life on lies. Yeah, and it's, uh, I don't know if you can come off of that, the gambling addiction, and get skills to come off of the drug addiction from, uh, with a counselor. I know it's a, it's uh Kind of confusing. He never did have a drug addiction. I mean, a gambling addiction. Right. He made that up just to sit someplace with counselors. One doesn't have, you know, he's just lying. He's just lying wherever he goes. But, you know, at least he confessed it here. Here is a place where you could uh, be honest. What about you, Hicks? You got a little confession for us? Uh, yeah. This one goes back to uh, the day after the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. the Monday morning. Um, I had a lot of... Uh, Heartburn, and I'm pissing in the morning. I th go to burp. I actually vomit. I vomit on my dick. I don't clean it up, and I walk around with vomit dick all day here in the studio. Now, so here in the studio, you puked on your dick. Yeah. In our bathroom. Yeah. And why wouldn't you clean it up? Uh, just laziness. So you walked around with a puke dick, and nobody here even picked up on it? Nope. <laughs> That's what this I This is the smells we're used to at oh. fucking 202. This is the disgusting part. Uh, make sure you set up Killer Joe and let him know how this works. Uh, we'll open up the phone lines and do a couple of confessions. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. It's a uh, snow day. It's a relaxing day. It's a linguine and clam day. Take your time off. 
and joy when you get a day like this every once in a while. That's the thing about um, Dave. He does not enjoy the fact that he's got a beautiful day for himself, that he can sit here and relax today, stay in those jammies, have a nice hearty lunch, put a little cream in your coffee today. Don't live the way that you normally do. Make it today a cream of coffee day. Day. You don't have to go just uh, straight black. Make it a, a memorable day for yourself. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Fezzy, I see you're waving your hand at me. You got something on your mind? Something you want to confess? Yeah, when I was uh, in, I think, in sixth grade. Mm-hmm. So we're talking 60, 70 years ago. No, not that long ago. Um... There was this kid in school who, it was the first year that we started dressing out for gym and you had to change clothes and shower and stuff. What did you do before then? Before then, we we didn't do it like in elementary school. What'd you do? Just went out and played in your regular clothes? Yeah, that was it. So there was this one kid who was always shitting himself. He uh, And he he stunk like it and that sort of thing. And what I did was um, got a diaper um, my little brother was still in diapers at the time and took one of his shitty diapers and hit it in the kid's locker. Mm-hmm. And the kid just had a breakdown right there, couldn't handle it. And that kid actually left the school. And when they were asking who did it, I did not speak up at all. Jacob, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, Ron. Hey, Fez. I have a confession. It's a, uh, I don't know, it kind of still haunts me to this day a bit. I, I killed three little birds. When I was a kid, little baby uh, robins, I think they were. I uh, I threw them in the water uh, just to watch them drown. Mm-hmm. It's pretty brutal. It happens. Kids right. do that. I once shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. Uh, here's John. John, you're on the run of the show. Hey, Ronnie B, I got a confession. Yeah, what do you got for you? I banged my mom in law last night. Now, this is a confession, not brag time. No, um, this is a confession. I, we, we Both of us. We were a little fucked up. We were drinking. The old lady is at her sister's house, right? Because mm-hmm. my mother lives with us. Uh, she's pretty hot. She's 60, 64, I think. And one thing led to another, and I hit her. Now, this never has come up before? You two were never uh, flirting with each other before? No. No. Not, never, never, would never even think it would happen either, Ronnie. It just, I don't know, what the fuck? She reached over, she grabbed me, and... Then one thing led to another, and before you know it, I was getting ahead, and then we went all the way. So you banged a 64-year-old woman? Yeah. She's pretty hot, though. I'm and, telling you. And now uh, I'm sure there's a sliding scale. Uh, uh, and now you're you're forced to all live together as one big happy family. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> In <laughs> Cougar Town. To my old lady, I'll be castrated. So what do you, uh, how do you hide this? I don't know, man. I don't, she, and when I got up this morning... She's laying in the, you know, on the couch, you know, wrapped up in one of them stupid freaking, you know, television things there. And, uh... The Snuggie. Uh, yeah, the Snuggie. And she's kind of looking at me like, uh, she was... didn't really want to look at me. All right, my friend. Here is, uh, Steve. Steve, you're on the Ron Fez show. Yeah, you're on Yeah. Uh, I have a confession. Yeah, what do you got? Uh, I recently found out that my mother that I've always known isn't really my mother. That my aunt that was kind of away from the family is really my mother. Mm-hmm. So, and I haven't told my mom that I know, but I believe that my brother knows. And there's been a quarrel between them and the whole family isn't speaking anymore. Well, so I don't know really what to do as far as do I say something? Well, let me just, first of all, ask you, how do you feel about finding that out? I, it, it really, I, I can't do it. I can't even, it's hard. What's hard, bro? Just to even talk about it to another family member. So I've, I've tried to hit around to it. Right, but how, 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 do it. how do you feel yourself finding out that the woman who raised you was your aunt? Um, Biologically. I'm flip flop because she lied to me. Um, she she basically took took me for my aunt. Mm-hmm. My, my my aunt, who was really my mother, was 15, and she put my mother's name on the birth certificate. Right. 
and she couldn't take care of me, and my mom just took her away from me. And when I was about seven years old, she came to me because my mom let her come around, and she told me that she was my mother. And I, I'm seven years old. I just went in the other room and said, "Just you're crazy." But le- yeah, but let's think about this, Steve. Could you imagine that the love that these women have for you to let this go on? Yeah. I mean, it's an extraordinary, and the story that you're bringing up happens, uh, particularly has happened uh, over the past with, in in the past with um, with a lot of people, finding out that, uh, you know, the grandmother's really the mom. This actually came out with Jack Nicholson when he was already a big, big star. But you got to look at it that these women, despite everything that was happening with society, loved some baby so much that they would make these moves to make sure that you would be raised. Do you want, well, my, my supposed real father has been locked up, and he was locked up in prison. So that was one reason they didn't really say anything about him. So he was more or less out of the picture for but, a long but time. But do you, get, do you get the fact of how much love that these women had for this little baby? But, yeah, but here's, my, here's the real problem, Ron, is that I want to, I'd like to meet my real mom, and I don't, I mean, like really, you know, have the conversation with her. Right. And I'm pretty sure it'll get back to my to my mom and I don't wanna I don't want her to know that I know. You know what I'm saying? I'm not ready. Well I really think that that you really need to figure out the positive nature of the things that you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That you want to come to these women, whether it was the fifteen year old woman who give you gave you up or your mother who raised you through all kinds of hardships carrying this thing for you right yeah and well, you want to be able problems as well they, yeah. they, they put him into debt and they took care of it so that's I right mean... but you need to go there from a place of thankfulness you know what i'm saying yeah for you to be a real man you got to get understand what these women did for this little baby and and some part of you has got to learn to be that even if all these women made mistakes they only did it out of love don't be some fucking guy who runs around in life finger pointing about the past when all you've ever had was a full belly and fucking people to depend on. I really get sick and tired of people who make it to adulthood and only have judgments about the way that they were raised. And I feel like those are the people who want to find fault with everything in the world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I totally agree with you. All right, so find a way, bro, before you start right. bothering other people with it. Okay. I, I love you. I love you, uh, Fez. Thank you, buddy. Take care. Bye. Eight six six Ron Zero Fez. Eight six six Ron Zero Fez. Uh, Wayne, Wayne, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, so yeah. sorry to switch gears in the way that I'm about to. Let me preface that, but I've uh, been something that's been bothering me for about a week. That I need to confess is that uh, driving back home from a business trip uh, on I twenty East, I uh, pretty much played with myself in the car and. Uh, follow through with it and uh, something that I've just been having a hard time dealing with right now. The fact that you jerked off in a car? Yeah, and, uh, yeah. No. Doesn't seem like crazy, uh, bro. No, but I'm saying, well, okay. <laughs> I mean, what were you listening to, Britney Spears? No, I was listening to the uh, the, the Playboy radio, actually. No, that's why they make and, it. And uh, so I went to a Kleenex and put it in my vitamin water bottle. So, but it's, it's just something that's been really, uh, really been sitting with me. So I just I feel better that I that I can confess this and just mm. get this off my. Chest. All right. Well, just don't ride the brake. Eight six six Ron Zero Fez. Eight six six Ron Zero Fez. Uh, here is uh, Party Hardy. Party, you're on the Ron Fez show. Hey Ron, I got something I need to confess. Uh, I got married and I had a step dog and my wife loved that dog. And he got down and uh, he died. She wanted to have him incinerated and keep his ashes. And I told her I'd take care of it, Ron. But I cleaned out the fireplace and bought that urn from the vet. And now we have a fireplace ashes and she thinks it's her dog. What do you think I ought to do? I love the fact that you uh, think that you got a step dog. I have never <laughs> heard the phrase before. <laughs> And I think you've invented a whole new thing. <laughs> this is my step dog. Uh, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Um, Eastside Dave, the man who takes off every time he sees a single flake of snow is called his back. How you doing, David? 
good, Mr. B. Okay, have a confession. I'm up here in the bedroom so that my wife doesn't hear it. She has the uh, radio. Got drunk Friday night and feeding the dog food. She has lots of shit going all over the place. I was feeding her chocolate and shit like that. So I'm hammered. It's about 1 o'clock in the morning. I go into the linen closet to take out a towel, what I thought was a towel, to wipe off all the diarrhea on the kitchen floor, only to know, to learn that I looked at it the next day, the next morning, and it was a quilt that Casey's grandmother had knit specifically for Juliana. Has little, uh, her birthday on it, has Casey and I's wedding, there's like actual pictures and shit. I feel horrible. I didn't tell Casey. I'm doing this. I did, doing this confession in the bedroom so she doesn't know. But I got. I, I chucked that fucking quote right in the garbage before Casey woke up on Saturday morning. Dude, what's wrong with you? Well, I know. I didn't. I. I. I felt terrible. But I. I thought. Why would you keep a quilt? Why would you keep a quilt in the linen closet? A special. Because it's linen. It's not for linens, though. To me, that's like a special item that should have been kept in Juliana's fucking closet. Here's what I love the fact about your alcoholism, that yeah. you need to blame everybody else. <laughs> not the fact that you get so drunk you don't know what you're doing and you're feeding the dog chocolate, which doesn't even make sense. Why were there Oreos left around? If, if uh, When I get drunk, I like to feed the dog snacks. There shouldn't be any Oreos on the counter. You drive me crazy, Dave. Mr. B, would you keep a special item like that, a homemade quilt in the ragtag linen closet where there's bullshit towels from Walmart and stuff? No, you would keep that in Juliana's, you know, toy chest or something like that. Mm. Uh, so I, 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 I do feel terrible about that, though. I, I do confess. Like, I confess that I hid it because now I think it, I, I could have just got the thing dry cleaned or something. It seems like maybe you could have um, <laughs> saved it. I could have put it in the washing machine, I suppose. So um, that I feel terrible, and I would like to confess that, and hopefully she doesn't find but out. Why do you feed? Why do you even feed your your dog something that's going to make him uh, sick? Well, I because I've done it before, and she's never gotten sick. Sick like this time, you know. I've given her M and M's pieces, Reese's pieces, butter cups, but I think put. I think giving her Oreos was just taking it up to too much of a notch so that was the mistake on my part you know what what, what do you want me to say i've been bad okay fine i do, I do confess it because that's what we're calling in for but what can you do um uh hold on here's hindu who's got a, a opinion about that hindu you're on a fez david you really can't be dumb enough but you don't know that chocolate will literally will kill a dog not true. My dachshund of 14 years used to eat chocolate. All, I fit my dachshund chocolate every Friday. There's a, there's a dog occasionally here and there that can stand it, but most dogs are, it, it really screws up their system. Don't do that, Dave. And it's wasting Oreos. I've looked on the website. <laughs> Thank you, Some dogs can, you know, it's no big deal. What sense does it make that would, would kill a dog anyway? It doesn't make any sense. Well, you, I know you don't give dogs candy. Well, uh, he, that's not true either, because I've given her Sour Patch Kids when I when I don't finish the bag at the movies, and, and Strummer's fine. Here is uh, John. John, you're on Fez. Yeah, I've heard Ron uh, tell Dave it's the show or drinking, and we've seen Dave's choice there. What would Dave do if Casey said it's her and the kids or alcohol? Turn the to kids stop. to alcohol? No, if it was either you stop drinking or they leave. Uh, I would probably choose the family, yeah. But, well, you know, luckily that decision's not going to be made, and that's I'm, you know, headed. whatever. I mean, well, you know, people make mistakes. I'm, I, I, I wasn't going to even say this until we, I heard the confessions being played. Well... I don't feel good about it. I'm not happy. I mean, you know, but the dog is fine. She had the shit. For you know, uh, four or five hours on Friday night. All right, Casey. I wrote. I love how Dave doesn't act like he doesn't know. I have the computer radio on. So your wife is obviously downstairs and knows everything, Dave. Fuck. What do you mean, I fuck? Forgot. Like you got caught? 
You called up a radio show. You're a radio show that you've been on a couple times today, and yeah. then you tell this story. Because I took the uh, XM off, because I, I, I unplugged the XM. I didn't think, oh, fuck. I didn't think that she was going to have it on Pal Talk. Uh, here is uh, Justin. Justin, you're on Fez. Hey, uh, just wanted to tell Dave not to uh, worry or feel bad. Uh, chocolate can kill a dog, but it's in uh, massive quantities. Uh, typically speaking, a small amount of chocolate at the most is going to give do a dog diarrhea. It's really not a big deal to kill well, a wait, dog. Wait, hold on. Why would anybody want the dog to have diarrhea when it's in a fucking in-house dog? I can Maybe see I was cleaning out the, the dog system. That would be, be okay if you had him outside. Yeah, well, I, mean, I I was thinking not. I mean, this isn't what I was thinking, but you know, if if you know, a human being has diarrhea, the system's cleaned out. It's not like so much of a bad thing. Well, so far this has only killed a keepsake uh, keepsake quilt. Well, it should have been around for a lifetime. Yeah, that's the thing that I feel bad about because her grandmother's probably going to die soon. So this is one last like memory of her. And why well, you just have her fucking start quilting all over again? Explain uh, your funny story. Say this could happen to any drunk. And do it over. Have her quilt some shit stains into the new one so that you don't have to worry about this again. It's just part of the pattern. It took her nine months to, to do this one. Nine months. She, she, had, she had to wait till Juliana was born before she finally sewed on the last patches. But she basically did it from as soon as she learned that uh, Casey was pregnant. Why didn't you at least see if you could have had it clean somewhere? It's already gone now? I hid it, yeah. I, I, I put it in the garbage can. And then the garbage people came on Saturday morning. And I made sure absolutely that it was at the bottom of the garbage can. No way she'd find out. See, yeah. again, that's why you shouldn't, you should, you know, not do things always under the influence because it, was, it probably was a mistake. I just walked downstairs. She's giving me the eyes now. Go sit next to her in front of the cam. I want to see how you two are getting along. She said, get away from me, Ron. All right. She's not happy. All right, by the way, Dave is all the way down to just wearing boxer shorts now. <laughs> she got up and left. Oh, God. He's got his open legs in front of the fucking cam. What? Oh, You're disgusting. Shit. I'm sorry. Having quite the snow day. I didn't realize that it was that down. She she got up and walked out. Uh, she's not. Uh, she's walking upstairs or something. What Look, an I, don't feel, I don't feel good about this. Then why are you laughing? Confession. Would, had I not called in, no one would have found out about this. Then I'd be all the wiser, wouldn't I? Yeah, you'd be such a great man if you weren't so honest. I'm simply saying that well, I called in, I was honest, and let's move on now. That's what confessions is for. I'll put the camera back down if no one's going <laughs> to... All right, now he's just got it back on his little fucking crutch. I'll punish Dave. everybody. If no one's going to accept my confession, my apologies, I'll, I'll, I'll balls it. And I'll, I'll take one of the balls out if I have right, to. I'm just going to say this. What? Uh, I'm going to speak to the other ladies. Take his cam off. Take the Casey cam yeah, off I'll play, I'll play, right I'll play. now. It's gone. It's gone. I'm back up. You, you, you have a headshot. Nice headshot, Mr. B. Hmm. This is why Sheepy grow, grows up confused. I got to tell you one thing, Mr. B. Yeah. I now know why I don't I usually uh, just lounge around the house in boxers. Smelly. Thank I don't you. know if it's my ball, my balls because I was trying to shovel snow or I got the swamp bath or what, but it's it's not a good, it's not a good odor. Maybe that's Thanks for sharing, Dave. All right, I'm going to break here, David. Okay. Thank Your you, life's sir. a nightmare. Okay. Bye-bye. I hope Casey beats you up. She's too classy <laughs> to do it on the radio. But I do hope she beats you up. Thank you. Yeah, just sit Bye. there. Just sit there in your <laughs> shame, Dave. Ron Bennington, Fez Watley, The Ron and Fez Show. XM 202.